1961, President JFK delivered the inspiring speech, We Choose to Go to the Moon, before a large crowd that had gathered at Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas. But long before then, the American intelligence community was already concocting a different plan. In 1949, the Armour Research Foundation began studying the effects of nuclear blasts on the environment, and in May 1958, the United States Air Force created a top-secret project that aimed to detonate a nuclear bomb on the moon. The project was given the code name Project A-119. Researchers believed that if the nuclear bomb was detonated on the surface of the moon and not in a lunar crater, it would be accomplishing two huge goals. The first being that it would help scientists answer some of the mysteries in astrogeology. The second and most important factor would be that the explosion would produce a mushroom cloud and a flash of light which would be visible to people all around the Earth with the naked eye. This was meant to boost domestic confidence in the capabilities of the United States, a boost that was needed after the Soviet Union took an early lead in the space race. In the late 50s, the United States were involved in a Cold War with the Soviet Union. The success of the Soviets in space and the failure of the Americans were demoralizing not only for those working on getting to space, but for the entire nation as well. With Sputnik, the first artificial satellite orbit around the Earth, the Soviets demonstrated that they had the technology to strike any place on Earth with a nuclear missile. The Declaration. Whether you like it or not, history is on our side. We will bury you. Made by the Soviet leader, Nikita Khrushchev also sent a chill down the spine of the Americans. The United States needed something very spectacular to boost their morale and they turned to what they know best, building a nuclear weapon and detonating it. They thought of sending an atomic bomb to the moon and detonating it for the world to see, and to create a massive impact that would help build up the confidence of people in the United States. Of course, this massive event would be so spectacular that it would put America back into the game. And just like that, Project A-119 was born. At the project's conception, newspapers were reporting a rumor that the Soviet Union was planning to detonate a hydrogen bomb on the moon. This project came to the public's knowledge because an anonymous source divulged to a United States Secret Service agent that the Soviets had planned to commemorate the anniversary of the October Revolution by causing a nuclear explosion on the moon to coincide with a lunar eclipse. The news report from the rumor also made mention that the Soviets were targeting the dark side of the Terminator. Project A-119 would also consider this boundary as the target for maximum visibility on Earth so as to create a positive perception of the American military and scientific progress. One issue is that they were afraid of the public backlash and were worried about the nuclear risk, which would occur if the launch failed. It was also known that a similar idea had been brought forward in 1957 by Edward Teller, the father of the h -mom. He proposed the detonation of nuclear devices both on and some distance from the lunar surface to study and analyze the effects of the explosion. The American governments were very frustrated at the situation, and they were desperate for something big to happen. After the space war with the Soviet Union, the U.S. Air Force assembled a 10-member team led by Leonard Rifle, who later became the deputy director of the Apollo program at NASA. Located at the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago, this team was to research the impact of a nuclear bomb blast on the moon and the potential visibility of the explosion on Earth. Among the members of the research team were astronomer Gerard Kuiper and his 24-year-old doctoral student Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan, the famous author and celebratory science communicator, was responsible for the mathematical projection of the expansion of dust cloud in the space around the moon, which is an essential factor in determining the visibility of the explosion on Earth and the second aspect of the project carried out by Carl Sagan was to explore whether such an explosion will unearth signs of unknown life forms beneath the lunar crust. Initially, the scientists considered using a hydrogen bomb for the project, but the idea was ruled against by the United States Air Force because the hydrogen bomb would be too heavy for the 240,000 miles trip and too heavy to be propelled by the missile. Instead, they decided to use a lighter and smaller device, a W-25 warhead with a relatively low yield of about 1.7 kilotons when compared to Little Boy, an atomic bomb that was dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima in 1945 during World War II, which had a massive yield of about 13 to 18 kilotons. The W-25 was to be carried by rocket to the shadowed side of the moon where it would detonate on impact. 
The dust from the explosion will be illuminated by the sun, therefore creating a mushroom cloud and flash of light that will be visible on Earth. Project A-119 actually had no practical purpose, no discernible national security goals, and its sole design was ambitious to show the world that the United States of America could do something spectacular. Work on the project continued until January 1959, when it was suddenly abandoned. The project was terminated by the Air Force, seemingly out of fear of negative public reaction and the risk to the population if anything went wrong with the project, such as the missile missing the moon entirely and returning to an unknown location on Earth. There would also be a huge cost for destroying a perfect lunar environment, which would affect future lunar research projects and colonization. Just imagine pieces of the moon raining down on Earth, wiping out satellites and spacecraft in orbits. The radioactive matter would have been left on the moon for thousands of years to come. After deliberating on the possible consequences of the project, the Air Force then decided to divert their energy, attention, and resources towards the moon landing. Mission Apollo 11 would undoubtedly be a much more popular achievement in the eyes of the American and international public. And if there was a nuclear bomb sent to the moon prior, then this likely would not have happened. A similar project also proposed by the Soviet Union never came to fruition. After this incident, Congress passed two bills to prevent such occurrences in the future. The first of which was the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty in 1963, and the other which is the Outer Space Treaty in 1967, designed to curtail all sort of aggressive behavior in space, which several countries agreed to. After this treaty, the United States and the Soviet Union came together and performed several high explosions, which include those of the K Project, Operation Argus, Operation Dominic 1, and Operation Hardtack 1. To date, there are still many people who believe that there are other reasons why the project was scrapped and that the reasons stated were just speculations. Project A-119 was made classified and all the people that were involved were vowed to secrecy. The existence of this project remained a secret until the mid-1990s when writer Key Davidson discovered the story while researching the life of Carl Sagan for a biography. Sagan gave out the details of the project when applying for an academic scholarship at the University of California in 1959, for which he was later accused for violation of national security. Shortly after Carl Sagan's biography was published in 2000, more details on the project came to light when the physicist who headed the study, Leonard Rifle, broke his anonymity and wrote a letter to the journal confirming that Sagan's action at that time had been considered a breach in the confidentiality of the project. He also made use of this opportunity to speak to the press and reveal the details of the project. As a result of the publicity the correspondence created, a Freedom of Information request was logged concerning Project A119, and it was only then that the U.S. government also published some documents on the project, including a piece titled, A Study of Lunar Research Flights, Volume 1. After the release of the first volume, people began the search for more of the documentation, and it was later revealed that other reports had been destroyed in the 1980s at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Despite Rifle's revelation, the United States government has never released an official statement or officially recognized its involvement in the project. If we were keeping count, the Soviet space program had many more firsts than NASA's. They sent the first ever person to space, the first ever satellite into the universe, and the first ever spacecraft to orbit the moon. Fortunately, they too gave up on nuking it. However, imagine if these powers had pushed through. Humanity then would have closed its doors to further explorations of the vastness of the universe. I don't think Neil Armstrong could have landed safely if any of these plans had gone ahead. Additionally, the children he mesmerized by his landing would have never been inspired to become the physicists and scientists they are today. Thanks for watching the code. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen.